Okay, so again, this test is going to have a lot of different um, derivative problems on it uh, involving product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. So expect a lot of that. Um, so the first one we'll look at find the derivative. of f of x equals 5x times e to the minus 3x. So we have u is equal to 5x, v is equal to e to the minus 3x. So then u prime becomes 5 and v prime becomes uh, minus 3e to the minus 3x using the derivative rule for the um, exponential functions in continuous form. And again, here what I'm doing is I'm just applying the product rule, which says if you take the derivative of u times v, this will be u prime v plus uv prime. So my derivative f prime of x is going to be uh, 5e to the minus 3x plus 5x times minus 3e to the minus 3x. And there you can multiply the 5x with minus 3. So we can write this as 5e to the minus 3x minus 15x e to the minus 3x. And that is it. Let's look at another product rule. Let's say uh, find the derivative of g of x equals x cubed minus x squared times the natural log of x. So here I'm going to set u to x cubed minus x squared and v to the natural log of x. So u prime will be 3x squared minus 2x and v prime will be 1 over x. So g prime of x applying the same rule is going to be 3x squared minus 2x times the natural log of x plus x cubed minus x squared. Times one over x. <coughs> and we can distribute the one over x and cancel um, there. So uh, we get 3x squared minus 2x times the natural log of x plus x squared minus x, and that would be it. Number three, another derivative problem, but this one is going to make use of the quotient rule. So find the derivative of h of x equals 5x squared plus x divided by 7 to the x power. Um, so let's recall what the quotient rule says. This says the derivative of u over v is u prime v minus u v prime all over v squared. So uh, u is going to be my numerator, 5x squared plus x. v is going to be my denominator, 7 to the x power. Um, so u prime is 10x plus 1. And v prime, remember the rule here, it's the natural log of base times the exponential function again, because we're in standard form. So this is going to be the natural log of 7 times 7 to the x. 
So um, we go ahead and plug that in. And like I said, with quotient rule, a lot of times you're gonna end up with something that's pretty messy for a derivative, but just need to make sure everything's in the right place. So um, we have 10x plus one times seven to the x minus uv prime. So um, 5x squared plus x times the natural log of seven times seven to the x. And this is all divided by seven to the x squared, which is the same thing as seven to the two x. And that's it, I would just finish there. There's not any real meaningful simplification that you can do. Okay, so that's it for some the product and quotient rule problems. Of course, you still may see those built into other problems, but just finding the derivative there. Um, so now we'll move on to ones that involve the chain rule more primarily. So for, let's say we wanna find the derivative of f of x is 10 times the natural log of x cubed minus seven. So remember the chain rule, um, I, I write it down in terms of inside function and outside function, but um, another way to think of it is if you have f of x is your outside function, g of x is your inside function, we're taking the derivative of this composition, it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So for this problem, my inside function is going to be just what's inside the natural log x cubed minus 7. So my inside is x cubed minus 7. My outside, well then I just write down the same function, but I replace that with another letter like t. So it'll be 10 times the natural log of t. And then I take the derivative of each one of those as usual. So inside prime is 3x squared. Outside prime would be 10 times 1 over t, which is just 10 over t. And then where does the derivative come from? I get that by multiplying the inside prime by the outside prime, but you change t back to the original inside. So my 10 over t is going to turn into 10 over x cubed minus 7. So my f prime of x here, I take 3x squared and I multiply it by 10 over this x cubed minus 7. And you can put that together as a single fraction. 3x squared times 10 is just 30x squared. So this becomes 30x squared over x cubed minus 7. And that's that. So let's do another chain rule problem. So 5, let's say we uh, want to find the derivative. of g of x equals the quantity x cubed plus x raised to the 100th power. So again, my inside function is just going to be that x cubed plus x. So then my outside function will become t to the 100th power. So the setup is pretty simple there. Take the derivative of those just using the normal uh, polynomial rules. So this becomes 3x squared plus 1. And the outside bring down that power and subtract it by 1. So we get 100t to the 99th. So then our derivative uh, we can write down. So g prime of x is this 3x squared plus 1 times the 100 then change t back to x cubed plus x to the 99. Um, and yeah, you can just leave it like that. That's good enough. Some people might distribute the 100, but it's not entirely necessary. So, I mean, you could write it as 300x squared plus 100 times x cubed plus x to the 99, but not, not strictly necessary. Again, you can't distribute it into the other one because it's raised to the 99th power. You can distribute it to the 3x squared plus 1 because that quantity uh, doesn't have an exponent. Um, 
Okay, so this next one's kind of like a chain rule, but it, you know it involves finding a tangent line, so it's a little bit more applied. So let's find the equation. of the tangent line. Two, the curve y equals x cubed minus two, that quantity raised to the fourth power at x equals one. So the two ingredients for finding a tangent line is you need the uh, value of a point and you need a slope. So we get the point by plugging x equals one into that equation and finding the y value. So that's not so hard, just some basic algebra. So y equals, I'll replace x by one, one to the third minus two raised to the fourth power. So that's negative one to the fourth power, which equals one. So our point is one comma one. The trickier bit is finding the slope because we need to take the derivative and then plug that x equals one into the derivative. So again, we're gonna use the chain rule here. So my inside function is x cubed minus two. My outside function is t to the fourth. So the derivative of the inside is three x squared. The derivative of the outside is four t cubed. So uh, my derivative of y prime is 3x squared times 4 times x cubed minus 2 to the third power. And then we just need to plug in 1 for x to find the slope. So you don't have to simplify ahead of time if you don't want. So plug in x equals 1 to find the slope. So the slope, which we usually use the letter M, is three when you plug in one there, nothing happens. So we get three, the four is still there. And then we're gonna get one to the third power, which is one, one minus two gives us negative one to the third power. So we get a slope of negative 12. So to find the tangent line, again, we know our line would look like Y equals minus 12 X plus some y-intercept b, and then we could plug in our point one, one to find the value of that. So plug in one for y and also one for x. And then you just add 12 to both sides and we see that b is gonna be 13. So our tangent line is y equals minus 12 X plus 13. That would be, I guess, that's what we're looking for here. Box it in to highlight that. Okay, so the next topic was uh, implicit differentiation. So uh, find Y prime given Let's say 3x squared y minus 5x equals y squared. So uh, what we do here is we take the derivative of each of the things as usual, but we treat y as an implicit function. So anytime you take the derivative of something involving a y, you're going to multiply by a y prime as well. Uh, the derivative of the minus five X will just be minus five. The derivative of the right hand Y squared will be two Y times Y prime. The tricky term is three X squared Y. So you think of three X squared as a function and Y as a function. So you're gonna have to use a product rule for that part. So we're gonna use a product rule for that very first term. So we'll call U three X squared and V will call Y. So the derivative of U is six X and the derivative of V is just Y prime because it's an implicit function. So the derivative of that very first term all by itself is 6XY plus 3X squared Y prime. So kind of had that off to the side here. So now we can write down the, the derivative of this equation. So we use the one we just computed 6XY plus 3X squared Y prime. 
then the derivative of five X is just five and the derivative of the right hand side Y squared is two Y, Y prime. So then what we have to do is collect the Y primes all on one side. So we can accomplish that by subtracting the three X squared Y prime on both sides. So we'll be left with just six X Y minus five on the left. And on the right, we have two Y Y prime minus three X squared Y prime. So then what we do is we factor the Y prime up on the right hand side and then just go ahead and divide. So this is six X Y minus five and on the right we're going to have uh, two y minus three x squared and then we factored out the y prime so then we divide by that parenthetical quantity and we, we get our answer six x y minus five divided by two y minus three x squared this gives y prime which is what we wanted to find so that was the implicit differentiation <clears throat> okay, so let's do one more of these implicit, different, <clears throat> implicit differentiation problems. So eight, let's say find y prime given uh, 5x plus y to the derivative of the uh, left-hand side is going to be multiply the inside by the outside, 5 plus y prime times the outside, which is 3 and then we get 5x plus y quantity squared. So that's the left-hand side. The derivative of the right-hand side is pretty easy. The derivative of 6 is 0, and the derivative of minus x squared would be minus 2x. So uh, what we have to do is we have to distribute the 5 and the y prime to the other two terms. So 5 times the uh, other quantity is going to be 15 5x plus y quantity squared, and then the other one is going to be 3 times y prime times the 5x plus y quantity squared. This equals minus 2x. So basically, we're going to subtract that first term and then divide by everything that's not y prime. So these implicit problems can get a bit mess messy, but Again, you're just hunting for all those y primes and trying to isolate them and then divide by everything that's not y prime once you've done that. So we're subtracting this term. So what is left on the left-hand side of the equation, we just have three y prime times quantity five x plus y squared. And then we have minus two x minus 15 is the quantity 5x plus y squared. So now everybody's on the right and we have the y prime term on the left. So we have to divide by everything that's not y prime. So that means we have to divide by the three and also the 5x plus y quantity squared. So there's a lot of algebra often in these implicit differentiation problems, but that gives our uh, derivative. So this minus two X minus 15 times this five X plus Y squared over three times five X plus Y quantity squared. And that's the derivative. It's not very clean, but uh, it's all there. Again, the, one of the reasons that's the case with these implicit problems is, you know, um, there are functions where you can't explicitly solve for y, so they're going to contain both variables and the derivative. Okay, so the last two are going to be some related rates word problems. So let's say we have the radius of a semicircle. Is expanding. at 1.5 centimeters per minute. So we can ask how fast is the area increasing? Uh, 
when r equals 10 centimeters. So again, that's a good thing to write down your uh, given information. So here we're given the rate of change of the radius. So we're given that dr dt is 1.5. And what do we want? We want dA dt when r equals 15 or when r equals 10, excuse me. So uh, the important thing to recognize here is this is the radius of a semicircle. So we're talking about the area, the typical formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So since this is a semicircle, it's just gonna be half of that. So the formula that we're using here is A equals pi r squared over two. So we can find dA dt by taking the derivative implicitly of both sides. So we get dA dt, bring down the two, it's just gonna cancel. So dA dt in this case is just pi times r. And uh, again, that's gonna be pretty simple because we just need to plug in uh, the, uh, the value of r. So dA dt there is going to be, um, Oh, I forgot to multiply by DRDT. Implicit differentiation, so we also have the DRDT. So I forgot that term. So uh, what do we do? Well, we just plug in the known quantity. So we want to find it when R is equal to 10, so replace that by 10. And we know that DRDT is 1.5. So we get 15 pi. And you could plug that into your calculator to get an approximation. So that would come out to 47.12 centimeters squared per minute and that would be the rate of change of the area at that moment so let's look at the last one it'll be a pythagorean theorem uh, related to rates problem so uh, number 10 say a ladder 13 feet long, rests against a vertical wall. Uh, if the bottom slides away, at two feet per second. How fast is the top sliding down the wall? When the bottom is 12 feet from the wall. So essentially we've got our picture here. So we've got some wall on a building, we've got the ground. So we've got our ladder and what's going on is the bottom sliding away in this direction and then the top sliding down like this. So uh, we're given, so we'll call the horizontal direction X. We're given that DX DT is two. And what do we want? We want dy dt when x equals 12. So um, basically, we're going to use the equation, the, the Pythagorean theorem. So if we call it the side x, the side y, we know the uh, latter is always 13. So uh, the equation we're going to use is the Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared equals 13 squared or x squared plus y squared equals 169. We're going to need to know the value of y after we take the derivative. So uh, let's go ahead and figure that out now as well. So basically, we want to know what the value of y is. 
when X is 12. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem there, Y squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. So that's gonna be 169 minus 144. So Y squared is 25. So that means Y is just five at that moment. So what we can do now is we can take the derivative um, implicitly. So we get two X times DX DT plus two Y times DY DT. And the derivative of 169 is just a constant, so it's zero. And then we can just plug in all the numbers we know. So we're, we're trying to find dy dt, and we know everything else. So x is 2, oh no, x is 12, dx dt is 2. And we know that y is 5 at that moment in time. So we get 48 plus 10 times dy dt this equals zero. So um, dy dt is going to be minus 48 over 10. Or we could say the top of the ladder is sliding down at minus 4.8 feet per second. The negative just indicates that it's sliding downward. But yeah, that would be your answer. So that's it for this problem. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop the recording.